YouTube, Twitter, Fenso Fenso, SoundCloud, SoundClick on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. And uh, I'm just chilling. My Tahoe. Chilling out. And uh, I've been seeing a lot of videos about, you know, these Asian people attacking black people in their stores because the black people are stealing or so-called stealing or they don't even they are, and some of them they're assuming that they're stealing here's a here's a see there's a big disconnect between black people and asian people we really don't have no beef against the asian people but the asian people you know they 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 build their stores in our neighborhoods and they really don't know us and you might have somebody out there going oh man i'm cool with the asian people you're cool with like two of them you know Come on. Uh, when I go to, like, when you go to black festivals, you usually don't see Asian people at the festival. But when you go to Asian festivals, you'll see black people at the Asian festivals. You know, it's the same thing with the Arabs. You know, Arabs build their stores in black neighborhoods, but they don't communicate with black people. Other than the times that you see them at the store. You know what I'm saying? And this is on a whole is what I'm talking about. Like, like, they don't really live amongst us. Asian people don't live amongst us. Indian people, Indian people don't live amongst us. Indian people, you know, live up amongst the white people. They don't live amongst us. And it and, and doesn't mean that black people live in dilapidated poor areas, you know, because there are some pretty nice areas where black people live, whole communities. I mean, there are, there are some wealthy black people in this world. Don't get it, don't get it mixed up. Uh, a couple millionaires and a few billionaires. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of millionaires and there's some billionaires that are black, other than Oprah. Nonetheless, <clears throat> so these Asians, and the one Asian guy just in, in North Carolina, I think, he just, I mean, he took this woman and he threw her to the floor. And it was just so unnecessary. And of course, the NAACP showed up and he wanted to apologize. But, he, I mean, like if that was my sister or my wife or something, I would have no choice but to go down there and lay hands on that man. I, I, I really wouldn't. I would, I already know, I'd be like, listen, I'm about to do, I'm about to go to jail because I'm about to go beat this dude up for putting his hands on my wife or my, my sister or my child. He could have detained her very, very easily, just not let her leave. Now I've seen some incidents where, and it was all over some eyelashes, that he thinks she stole. There was no proof that she stole it because even when the police got there and they handled the whole situation, she was never charged with theft, which means she didn't steal. And she was telling him the whole time, I didn't steal anything. He's like, yes, you did. See, see, now he's probably had people rob him before that were black. Listen, black people, white people, Asian people, all people steal, okay? That doesn't mean everybody steals. You know what I'm saying? Now, a, a recent situation, you know, some white people attacked this black woman who was in the store uh, recently, even after the Asian did it. You know, they attacked this woman and pretty much, you know, was handling her and saying that she stole and all this. And I'm like, okay, we're seeing a, a, a lot of this. Now, I'm not saying that these women are innocent. I'm saying that the way they're handling these people, it... it, it they don't even know if they stole or not. They're assuming that they stole. And even if they did steal, I mean, that one woman got beat up. That black woman got beat beat up. That Asian dude beat her behind. Point blank. Threw her to the ground the whole night. Now, I've seen a situation where the Asian dude, what he did was he held the woman's purse. Because she was stealing. And he didn't he didn't fight with her. He held her purse. And she was holding on to the other end, the other end of the purse and trying to get out the store. And he was like, you're not going anywhere. And he just, he did what he should have did. Which he was holding a purse because that's where the items were. He wasn't holding on to her. And there were other people, black people, standing around filming it. And they was on the Asian guy's side. And I would have been too. Listen, regardless of the fact that there's a disconnect between Asian people and black people, they don't really know us. But since they do have stores there, they're there legal. They, they're merchants. You can't be mad about them being merchants. You know what I'm saying? Okay, fine. You're a merchant. You're you're in this neighborhood. People come in and they steal from you. There's a way to handle that. Now, some people want to come in with guns. Hey, I don't have no beef about you protecting yourself. They come in with a gun. Hey, 
some people need to get their head knocked off. I ain't saying they need to get killed. I'm saying they need to get their head knocked off. Well, if they point that gun to shoot and kill you, then you got you got the right to stand your ground or whatever happens, happens. That's a fact if you know that they have a weapon. If you assume that they have a weapon and they don't have a weapon and you draw your weapon and you shoot them, I believe you need to go to jail for a very, very, very long time. Even, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's a cop. I don't care who it is. That person doesn't have a gun and you shoot and kill them or you shoot them, you should be in jail. But my point is... People have been excessive towards black people because they're assuming that every black person does uh, some kind of crime. Or, not, you know, even in this last situation, they said the woman couldn't afford to shop there and the woman had $1,000 in her purse. And they were blaming her for something she didn't do. Now, I went through something like that recently. I put it on YouTube and YouTube made me take it off because I filmed the me talking to the people who, uh, who were associated with the individual. It was at Scentology. It's a place where they sell cologne. And I'm talking to one clerk, and the other clerk, the male clerk, goes, well, you know, if you have to ask. Because I was like, well, what are your prices? He's like, well, if you have to ask. And I'm not even talking to this asshole. You know? I'm like, like, what's his problem? And she's like, you know, ignore him. And then I'm talking to her again. I'm saying, well, give me some mid-range price to give me some smell. He key, and he said it again. Well, if you have to ask. And I was like, wait, you know, is this dude being racist towards me? And he was. So I went back like a, a couple days later and I filmed the whole conversation and they, and, they, and one lady was like, yeah, he's being racist towards you. So I filmed it and put it up on YouTube. They say that you didn't have permission to film my face. YouTube took the video down. Okay, fine. I don't have their face this time. I'll tell you where they're at. They're at Easton and Easton is in Columbus, Ohio. And they're at Easton, and it's a little booth called Scentology, and there's three, three, three or four women at work there, and uh, one of the women is black, or, or Eritrean, or whatever she is, and there's one white dude that worked there, and he's a racist-ass bastard. Now, I told him, told the black woman, and I saw her, I told her what happened, and she goes and said, hey, this guy put this on YouTube, then he made me take it down. Okay, fine and well, but nonetheless, she got my point to tell this dude who wants, you know, who wants to be a wise ass, you know what I'm saying? She got, she, she pretty much told him like, this dude is upset about what you did. And then, you know, one woman was trying to say that he says, he says that to everybody. I'm like, you wouldn't say that to some white woman who came up here because you know that these people that live and work up here got money, but you were assuming that I didn't have money and everything I had on that day was new. You know what I'm saying? I had well over $500 worth of gear on. You know what I'm saying? I had plenty of money in my pocket. I got plenty of money in the bank. I'm not worried about some $100 cologne or $600 cologne. I could have bought all that and not even cared. You know what I'm saying? But he's going if you have to ask. So he's basically telling me that I could not afford to, I could not afford to shop there. You know, see, there, is white, there are white people and there are crackers. And that's a cracker. All right. That's somebody who wants to differentiate between himself and another individual simply because of the way they look, not the quality of their being, simply because the way that they look. He looked at me, saw that I, uh, and saw my appearance as a uh, a so-called African-American male, you know, or a black man. And he made the assumption that I could not afford to shop there when I'm there every freaking weekend buying something. You know what I'm saying? Buying watches and whatnot and just, you know, chilling, having a good time. And then you got to come out your mouth when I wasn't even talking to him. So I'm saying there's a there's a disconnect between, you know, uh, uh, people nowadays. And there's there's some really bad assumptions going on uh, between, uh, like I said, Asians, uh, white people, uh, it just it, all towards black people where, and I'm not, I'm not saying black people are innocent. I'm saying we as, as people, period, we need to get off of that because if I, if I would have went back up there and that dude would have said something else to me, I would have had no choice but to confront him. Like you have a, you have an issue. Like you, you must think you got mad MMA skills or something, or these cops in here is going to stop me from punching you in the face or whatever, because I'm six two two eighty. You want to get it in with me? You got to come with it. I'm not playing none of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the baddest dude in the world, but I know how to defend myself and I'm going to come at you. If you keep coming at me, you know what I'm saying? First, I'm going to be like, okay, dude, whatever. I wasn't even talking to you. But if you keep coming at me, I have no choice but to stand up and look you in the face and be like, what it is. 
what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? I have no choice but to do that. You know what I'm saying? And he's as tall as I am. So I, I'm like, I'm assuming, you know, since he won it, there ain't going to be no backing down. Now, I don't go around looking for fights, but I'll be damned if I'm going to be 50 years old and let this dude talk to me any old kind of way. I'm saying they need to, like, the one, like, I wasn't even talking to him. The clerk, the female I was talking to, she handled the situation like a professional. Look, we need to get off of this because, truthfully, we, look, you know, we need, we need each other. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. Because, you know, our president is about to send us into a whirlwind economically, uh, as far as war is concerned. And I'm telling you, we're going to all be on the front line. And, and, and as a military personnel, I'm telling you right now, you we all need each other. We need to cut out the nonsense because we don't know who's coming for us. You know what I'm saying? The way this president is acting, we don't know who's coming at us. I, I'm, I'm just saying we need to all chill with that because I don't have a racist bone in my body. But if you differentiate between me and you because of the way I look, then I got a problem with you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going and, and to handle that one way or another. Now, we can either take it to courtroom or we could take it to the curb. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not having that. I'm too old to be backing down from some asshole who got an issue with black people. You know what I'm saying? And that's just that. And as far as these Asians, you know, if they want to sell whatever, you know, Arabs and all y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all want to set up yellow shops in, in black neighborhoods you got to know that hey, look people still even if you in shoot when even if you in your own neighborhoods number a raps a rap still don't act like they don't asian still but people still you know but if they coming in there and they trying to take some shampoo and you wrestle them to the ground you there's gonna be repercussions for that you can't treat people any old kind of way and that's my whole point that is my whole point. If you don't like what people are doing, then you might have to leave that area. Go to an area where you think it's not going to happen. But if you're going to be racist, you can't go into somebody else's neighborhood and be racist against them. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> I don't like black people, but I'm going to sell to black people and get their money. <laughs> people know, like, we can feel that. We know you're going to have people stealing from you on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, it's your boy Tone202, man. Let's just make sense of it all. I'm out.